How is it going, everybody? This is live. Uh, there's a bit of delay tonight. Not in, not in the stream starting, but uh, in the delay that I'm talking and coming to you, I hit the wrong settings when setting up the stream and tried to fix it, uh, but it won't let me. So there's more of a delay than usual. So I might be uh, a smidgen behind on chat stuff. But first, as you can see, Black Friday again, other side, right over there. I gotta remember, it's like reversed right there, is being kind enough and awesome enough to help facilitate said live stream and keep this thing going. So let's pull up. We're gonna talk about that. Um, so as you guys may have noticed, this cool new paintball gun has come out, the Die DSR. And as that graphic says on the bottom left hand side of your screen, blackfridaypaintball.com are doing pre-orders on all of the Die DSRs. So you can get your DSR in many different colors. I had this all set up and now it looks like I screwed it up. There we go. So my objective was to go to their website and show you all the colors. So there's the black out black color. You can see in the top left, the, what are they calling that? Blaze red gray, green machine lime and gray, the die cam, which is pretty cool. That camouflage one, this one right here. I like this. The die cam stuff is pretty sweet. A fan of the die cam as well as the blue, well, I don't know what they're calling that, blue line, blue gray, I don't understand the line part though, kinetic bucks, bucks, I also don't understand that. I don't get the naming conventions. Die in their naming stuff, it's kind of weird sometimes. But yeah, they're doing pre-orders. So if you guys want, please go check them out. There is a link in the description to pre-order your die DSR, Black Friday, they have a bunch of stuff. They're pretty awesome. So help this channel by shopping at blackfridaypaintball.com. They support this whole thing and are gonna help it evolve and continue happening, we're gonna say. Yeah. So DSRs should ship toward the end of the month. Dai was told us that they're gonna ship on the 27th, at least to dealers. So they should start shipping to customers probably around the end of the month. And one thing's sure, one thing's for sure, with all these new products, if you think you want a DSR soon, it's better to jump on that initial pre-order or order them quickly because what happens a lot, is say Die or Planet Eclipse, whoever it is, they like make a bunch of guns, ship that first lot, and then it's like a month until you can get more. So if you want them, jump on it quick so you can, oh no, get a DSR. Yeah. They're pretty friggin' sweet. I actually really like that. DSRs. Do they do layaway? I don't know. I actually thought about that prior to this thing. I'm sure they could work something out. I would email them, find out, info at blackfridaypaintball.com. That's the email address I'm certain of. But how about we talk about the DSR? Because last time we did this live stream, um, the DSR was like, I don't know, nothing was known about it. So it's all new. Let's pull images back up. DSR, right? Um, I'm actually quite impressed. I didn't know what to expect, right? Like, I didn't think it was gonna be anything really cool. Um, I don't know, I didn't really, I just thought it was gonna be expensive. Um, and I don't know, it's kind of maybe less than I expected. I kind of had expected something to be in that like $1,100,000-ish, uh, maybe $1,000 plus range. But yeah, at $900, it's gonna compete directly uh, with the 160R and that new Shocker XLS. 
I like it. I mean, I think it looks really good. I think that's the best looking gun they've ever made. I really like the grips. I don't know, something about the grips I just like. I think I like that like solid color. I don't know, I really like it. I think it's sweet, so I can't wait to get one. I have one coming, but like I said, they won't be here until, I don't know, probably the end of the month. So hopefully we see, yeah, an actual review of the DSR. I don't know, I just like it. It's, it's fun to look at. It's a good looking gun. I'm impressed. It's been a long time since I've been impressed by a paintball product. And I don't know, I just, it looks really good. I think what they say, it has an operating pressure of 115 PSI. So it's a very low operating pressure. Yeah, I'm just curious. Still has an eye pipe, which I don't know if I'm a big fan of. They work, but sometimes people have issues with eye pipes because they're not using them right. So we'll see. The screen went blank on my laptop. DSR, yeah. Uh, Christian says it looks like the Shocker XLS. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. I really like DSR. I think it's pretty sweet. So, But, like I said, until we get it, who knows? But it looks really cool. They did kind of rip off some stuff from Planet Eclipse, though. I should have actually pulled more of the pictures up. But how the batteries in the foregrip, kind of like the Planet Eclipse, like the CS1, they put the regulator in the trigger frame. I guess Mac Dev probably did that first, but Planet Eclipse is now doing it. But that's okay. I mean, people say how they like companies, other companies rip stuff off. And that's kind of just how it goes, right? I mean, we see uh, a manufacturer make a cool product or, you know, have some innovative design and then it kind of like trickles down the industry. I mean, we see that in everything, everything, whether it's phones or laptops or shoes or whatever it is, you know, like innovative design and then everyone kind of like copies it, so. Mm -hmm. The LV 1.5 is better. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I actually don't, I, I, I don't really like the LV ones that much, so who knows, I don't know. Did you miss an unboxing? No, I said that I was going to, I don't know where I put that gun. There it is. I was going to unbox a, or take apart, not take apart, we're not taking it apart. Unbox a Shocker XLS, and since I'm talking about it, we might as well just do that. So, I have never touched one of these, so this is literally like the first time we're touching an XLS. I still don't like the name. I don't know, something about it, like XLS, it's just kind of hard to say. I don't know. How does the DSR look fat? I mean, look at, how does this look like a big gun? I don't know, <laughs> whatever. That's the problem, I actually read the comments during the live stream, and some people are crazy. Oh, upside down. So, case, right? Um, yeah, case is better. I mean, I don't know, the previous like RSX case was good. It wasn't like bad. Um, I have a feeling that Exalt makes this. It looks like something Exalt would make, uh, which is good. I mean, Exalt makes quality things. It looks really good in that lighting though. Like it's all shimmery and like fancy looking. We should put the SP up. So this is a, we can't, I don't know if you can see that, a pewter and black. So it's like grayish and black, we'll see. All right, let's see what's in this box. I really have no idea. Barrel cover, yeah, with a Smart Parts logo. <laughs> barrel, as expected, uh, Freak XL barrel. Let's screw barrel together. XLS case made by Exalt? I think so, it's possible. They make other stuff for other companies. Uh, grease that is unlabeled, it's just a thing of grease. It, it's probably 33. Yep, 
Dow 33 medium. <laughs> if anyone's curious. Parts kit. Um, yeah, it's like the same parts kit that like, I don't know, they've always come with. The shockers have always come with, we'll see. Uh, we'll leave the barrel out. A ridiculous, ridiculous size Allen wrench kit. Look at this thing. That's like a full set of Allen wrenches. <laughs> Trace Brown with a hundred yen super chat. Thank you. We're gonna move this again. So yeah, lots of Allen wrenches. A, I think that's gonna be every Allen wrench uh, you maybe ever need. That's a lot of Allen wrenches. I don't know about these live unboxing things, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of weird, and I think one of these is bent. Yep. That Allen wrench, uh, you can't see it, is definitely bent. <laughs> Not that it matters, okay. XLS. This is actually probably like, we're gonna put that over there, because that doesn't really matter. This is actually like, uh, the interesting part, do I like this color? Like, it's hard to kind of see in this lighting. It probably looks better for you guys. Like I can see it better in the monitor than I actually can um, in real life because all the lights pointed at me and there's no light from behind me. XLS, it's not in focus. There it is. Yeah, I don't know. So the thing that I was curious about with these is like, would I actually notice the bigness? Would I notice if it was bigger? Um, I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't, it doesn't, I mean, one thing that I do notice right away, so they made this smaller. Trace, again, $200, not $200, I shouldn't say, 200 yen from Japan, I imagine. He said, sent photo for PB setup wars. When is vid two? Uh, it matters which, I don't know, probably two weeks uh, because I have most of the next two weeks scheduled. Uh, there's gonna be like this review, there's gonna be a, like the Immortal Air Reg review and then the setup wars will probably come in then. So maybe three weeks-ish, roughly. I still don't know what it's gonna be. I still don't know if it's gonna be mid-range, Guns or pump guns though, so yeah. This thing, yeah, I was curious if I would be able to feel uh, the difference and no, I don't know, it feels like a shocker. So if any of you guys like the way the shocker feels, uh, it feels the same. I mean, I guess it feels a little bit bigger, but I still don't, I still think the foregrip's too small and I still think the frame is too small for me. I mean, like, I hold this thing and it, like, smothers the trigger frame. My hand, like, absorbs the whole thing. So, I just, it's just still too small. But what's definitely nice is I like how they made the on-off knob smaller. So, I can actually grip the gun down lower, because I definitely do that. I hold guns kind of low. I don't hold them, like, way up high. So, I can put my hand around the bottom of the trigger frame a little bit better. Yep, bolt. The bolt is bigger, so they added that extra volume so that uh, it has a 35 PSI lower operating pressure, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't know, it's a shocker. Uh, one thing I noticed is this eye cover is not tight. <laughs> they didn't tighten the screw on the eye cover. You might be able to hear that. Yeah, that one's not tight either. Interesting. Whoa. Uh, yeah. XLS. Uh, to me, it's just a freaking shocker. It doesn't seem anything crazy. Uh, I guess I have to shoot it and play with it first. So that is gonna happen. So in the, like I'm gonna do a shooting review, a shooting video and an actual review of this. So there'll be two videos. Uh, and at some point we're gonna do like a raffle where you can buy like raffle tickets for like nine bucks or whatever. 
when I go to sell this. You have to go to the Paintball Room My Life Facebook page though, group I should say, and there's a link in the description for that too if you want to have a chance to own this for $9. That's that. Yeah. Backwards unboxing. I don't know what that means. Do you think the RSX will experience a price drop? Chris asks, no. Uh, mainly because th that thing's $900 and the RSX is $700. So it's already cheaper and I mean, we can see that the RSX is, the, they've said this, the RSX is gonna remain in production. Uh, and then that's just gonna be like a higher end version uh, of the RSX, the XLS is. So no price drop, at least not yet. Um, it's possible at some point, but I mean, not anytime soon, so yeah. Can you do a DSR shooting review? Yeah, I will for sure, DSR. Yeah, I just gotta get one first. Uh, DSRs, yeah, so if everything works out like I want, so in other words, if Die actually ships guns on the 27th, uh, I should have a DSR to use on the 29th, go use it and play with it on the 1st of October, and then on the Third, should have a review. So if everything goes as I want it to, uh, on the 3rd of October, there will be a DSR shooting review. Uh, and I really wish that like, die, like John, why am I blanking on John's last name all of a sudden? PB Nation John, why am I blanking on his name? I don't know. Either way, John from PB Nation, he always gets guns early. I really wish I could get guns early. I have to buy them though, so that's the only way I'm getting them. It's the only way it's happening. How do you watch Paris World Cup? I don't know, is, is it, uh, I'm not entirely sure I know the answer to that video, or that question. Um, I mean, previously, John Dresser, there we go. Thank you, <laughs> I don't know why. Totally blanking. Um, I don't know. I mean, previously the Millennium did, uh, like on the Faceful website or Faceful on, paint on Facebook, which sounds confusing, it did the web webcast for the Millennium series. Um, so I imagine I would just cruise to Facebook and try to find, um, yeah, the Millennium's Facebook page and then I imagine they'll post something about it if they're even doing a webcast. I mean, honestly, there's all these rumors about, you know, the NXL buying the Millennium Series. And it's like, if that's happening and they know it's happening, it's like, why even bother with the webcast? <laughs> Just finish this last event off and be done with it. That could be what's happening. And I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't blame them for doing that. I get it. Just be over it. Wash your hands of it. Mike, what do I think of the arc bolt? So the arc bolt is the bolt that's coming in this thing, the die DSR. Um, see, I don't, one of the problems is like, I don't know about all these like crazy intricate workings of like certain spool valve guns. Like I couldn't tell you like, oh, the, the dump chamber routes the air to the, you know, I don't know any of that stuff. But to me, it looks like they just kind of like, Again, I don't want to say copied or ripped off, but it looks like they like used some of the designs that uh, Planet Eclipse has been using for a while. And that's good. I mean, that's probably allowing them to get a lower operating pressure, which is fine. So we'll see. I mean, ultimately it's gonna come down to what it shoots like and kind of how it feels in my hands, whether I like it. So many of these guns shoot well. It's just that, you know, how it's gonna feel in my hands is gonna probably dictate more whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. And yes, at some point when a DSR is, you know, used or whatever, um, yeah, I will raffle that thing off too. So we'll do that on the Facebook group too. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I mean, we do have to think these guns are in this raffle thing. They're going to be used, but only one time. It's only for me to do the shooting videos and stuff, because it's like, after I buy a gun brand new and then use it, it's like, damn, that kind of sucks, because I really don't want to own all, <laughs> all of these. We can't afford to just buy them and keep them forever, so they got to somehow uh, figure out a way for me to get rid of stuff after it's been used, so... What do I think of the Mexican Paintball League? The MXL, I think? Isn't it the Mexican X-Ball League? I have no idea. Couldn't tell you anything about it. I know I'd love to go play somewhere in Mexico in one of those tournaments. That'd be super cool, but I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I really don't know. Yeah, what does DSR stand for? Did they ever say that? I don't even know if it stands for that. I'm curious, who actually says? Dave, can Canadians get in on the raffle? I don't know. How, what's it like shipping paintball guns to Canada, though? That might be problematic. Um, so maybe not? I don't know. Davis paintball when you get it so we can compare it to my M2. Um, maybe, I don't know, I have no idea. I know that I'm gonna go to, I think West Coast Adventure Park this weekend to do the, I hate the damn shocker name, the XLS and do that Immortal Air Reg testing stuff. See, no one knows what the DSR, what DSR actually stands for. It definitely doesn't stand for Die Sport Racer. <laughs> Ooh, Die Second Rate. That's pretty good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Shipping is only a couple bucks more, Dave, but isn't it like this weird customs thing and like shipping stuff like that to Canada? It gets all weird. I guess we could lie and just say it's a gift and it's like a toy, a toy paint, a paint marker or something. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, there's someone copying, pasting cooled colored text. Would you rather buy an Ego SLS for $500 or an LV1 for $500? Uh, definitely LV1 because it shoots better. I mean, it's a better gun. The SLS is only expensive because it's rare. So I'd... There's a fire truck outside. I'd much rather have the LV-1. It's just a better freaking gun. It's just better all around. Yeah. When is this raffle happening and where can we buy? Uh, go in the description of this video, like the very bottom of the description, there's a thing that says the Paintball Room My Life Facebook group. Go there and just watch that every once in a while and you shall know when it's gonna happen. I'll probably do it, we'll probably like figure out something Monday, Monday or Tuesday or something like that because I wanna use it first and you know, do, get, do all that jazz. Tim Cole, die, our pro teams used to win these. Win with these? I don't understand that. Oh, no. The SLS is so old. It, it is old. I don't even know what the SLS is. Isn't it like a Ego 9 or something like that? Now there's police going by. Something's happening. Something is happening. Die Sport Race? I don't know why would... Why would why would the D why why would DSR stand for die sport race though? Like that sounds weird. Maybe it didn't stand for anything. I mean like CS1 doesn't stand for anything. That's just what it's called. <laughs> who can tell me what die stands for? Let's see who the first person to tell me what die stands for. Because die is an acronym too. So technically it's the DYE DSR. <laughs> Although, like I said in the beginning of this, my 
like the I'm super laggy right now. I talk and then like 30 seconds later you guys see it. So me asking questions to the chat is kind of weird. It's not so much real time. Yeah. So it's not very exciting. Uh, other than Jake. <laughs> okay, Jake totally got it. But someone said, die system revisioned. But, okay. Jake definitely got it with Dave Youngblood Enterprises. But then Royal Palm came in. And then he got it, but that was after Jake, so I don't really know. A couple people that are late. A Daddy Yankee Extra. <laughs> nope. nope. Donkey Yogurt Ear? That's a good one. 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 Okay, definitely Dave Youngblood Enterprises. That's what it stands for. Uh, funny tidbit, that's not Dave, Dave Youngblood's actual last name. What is Dave Youngblood's real last name? That's even more insider, maybe. Let's see who can get this one other than Jake. Melissa, you are always drinking from a Starbucks cup. Actually, that wasn't a question. You said, you are always drinking from a Starbucks cup. What are you drinking? Uh, cold brew coffee. Just cold black coffee. Mm -hmm. No one can guess. Is anyone going to be able to guess Dave Youngblood's last name? Real last name? Nikki got it. Although I don't know if that's how you spell it, but that's good enough. Jeffer. <laughs> uh, is that a decent guess? Decent guess. You know what else is cool? So yeah, Dahan. Dave Dahan is Dave Youngblood's actual real name. Dave owns Die Paintball. He owns the Iron Man. Yeah. Dave did not start the Iron Man though. But he owns them now. You know what else is cool, guys? This. So it's definitely like sock and sandal weather. Actually, it's really not. I just really want it to be sock and sandal weather. But I told you guys, that's like the new thing. Socks, we have wool socks, some smart wool wool socks, and Choco sandals. <laughs> the future, it's really comfortable. Cause it's kind of like you're barefoot, but not barefoot. Yeah. That's how it is. Everyone with the Dave DeHaan guesses, but you're way late. Way late. The Ironmen sucked this year. They got fourth in LA. They got fourth, right? Didn't they just get fourth? I don't know if that's sucking. They have not done well. They have for certain have not done well. They have not done as well as they would like, but I don't know if fourth sucks. That's not that bad. They did get fourth, right? I mean, I don't know. I could be completely wrong. Let's just find out. <laughs> Dude, people, it's all about socks and sandals. I'm telling you. Let's go to the NXL. Let's go to NXL and let's look at team ranking. Let's do it. We can do it like this, actually, and make it all cool. Bam, Black Friday's paintball, blackfridaypaintball.com again. Go there, buy some stuff. NXL. We're popping over to the NXL website. We're going to go events. No, NXL team ranking. I think they've updated this. Ranking breakdown. So, the Ironmen are way down here. <laughs> yeah, they're in 10th place overall. That's not good. Um, but 4th place last event's pretty good. 
But I kind of feel that like the last layout was a little flukish because the layout played so slow that, I don't know. It's just a weird layout. Man, look at impact though. You know what's crazy to me is damage. Damage right there in like fourth place, like that's, or second place overall, like that's weird. I guess it's not, look at this, eighth. They got an eighth, they got a third, I got a second, and a third. I don't know, if you asked me who is in second place, I would not say damage, so I don't know. I don't know why I'm surprised by that, but it's just not what I would expect. I don't know. Fourth place is pretty good though. No, PC Katana shouldn't go home. PC Katana is not bad. PC Katana, they are, I mean, PC Katana is in third, 12th overall. I mean, they have a better record than, or better, yeah, record, I guess, than Aftershock, than Boom, than Revo, and Thunder. You know, I think Thunder might, oh, I don't know, man. I hate to say it, but I think Thunder probably shouldn't play pro. I mean, the only reason, like, I guess, I don't know, because Boom got eighth that one tournament. See, I don't even know, that's what I meant to look up today. I meant to look up today if, um, if there was actually a relegation thing in the NXL rules. I'm not even sure if there is a relegation section in the NXL rules for pro. So it's like, okay, DMG just won three events this year. They should play pro next year, right? But is there a relegation thing? Can they like kick a team out of pro? And did they ask Thunder to leave? Like, that's crazy, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I don't know. I feel like I wanna look it up really quick, but I feel like I shouldn't because we're doing this live stream. And it wouldn't be very exciting me scrolling down the rules. Yeah. DMG has to go pro. We should have Marvin back on here, and Marvin should talk about DMG going pro. Yeah. DMG sucks. DMG does not suck. That's for certain. I can tell you right now that if we look at these standings, right now, let's look at the standings. DMG could beat Thunder almost every time. DMG could beat Revo, DMG could beat Boom, DMG could beat Aftershock, DMG could beat PC Katana, DMG could beat the Outlaws, DMG can compete with the Ironmen, they can compete with Uprising, and the other teams they would struggle with. Maybe not struggle with, but it'd be competitive or the other teams would win. So I'm, DMG honestly is better than half of the teams in the pro division right now. I watch the DMG practices. I watch them practice against like Impact often. I watched them at the Thunder practice like two weeks ago. We've watched them play the Ironmen and they beat Thunder like 90% of the time. And they beat Impact like only maybe 10% of the time, but it's Impact. I mean, they're the best team in the world, so. They often would beat the Ironmen. I mean, they, at that practice, they probably beat the Ironmen a lot, like over 70% of the time. But that was early in the season too, so yeah. Braun Evans, thank you for the super chat, sir. Yeah. Um, so, DMG's legit, that's all I gotta say. But it will get kind of weird because Dave Baines, coach, head honcho, maybe not head honcho, but main person with Edmonton Impact owns DMG. So it is kind of weird once we see like, I don't know, maybe DMG is a pro team and Dave like owns, manages DMG a little bit and then like, Plays for impact, coaches impact. It's kind of weird. So, who knows? Hey, Iggy. Right on you, sir. 
Just check the rule book. There is relegation. See, that's what I couldn't remember. I know that I've looked at it before. I just couldn't remember. I'm curious, though, how does relegation work? Do they kick out the bottom team and ask one to come up? Because I can't remember. Last year they had, like, teams quit, you know, like 187 quit, so it worked out. They didn't have to relegate anyone. PC Katana dropped away, or no, 187 dropped away, and then PC Katana went pro. So it worked out for the NXL. They didn't have to worry about relegating anyone. So that's kind of cool. Craig, Craig's awesome. Craig buys a ton of stuff from the Paintball Ruined My Life store at paintballruinmylife.com forward slash shop. He does, he's great. Super supporter, it's awesome. He asked how you super chat. Well, I would assume if you're on an iPhone or iPad, you can't do that. Cause it's pretty obvious. If you're on like a non-Apple phone or tablet, it's pretty obvious. If you're on an iPhone, you can't do it. Yeah. Why, I don't know. It's just weird. I don't quite understand. You can do it from an Apple computer, but not, a, not an Apple phone, which is weird. I just don't get it. Jake says, what happened to 187? 187 crew, um, they'd been... They'd been around for a long time, right? Maybe like 10 years and maybe playing pro five-ish years, somewhere in there. Um, and Dave Painter, who owns a paintball field, um, I'm Fox 4 paintball in Massachusetts, owns the team too. And I don't know, he, I think he just got tired of it. Yep, <laughs> that's really about all. So they just were like, yeah, we're not gonna do the team anymore. And yeah, 187 is no longer. That's really all. I mean, some of the 187 guys found other teams. Uh, some of them quit, like Eddie Painter still playing, his son. Matt Darula still playing. Josh Pike still playing. Nick Sloviak, he was on the team for a year. He's still playing. So there's guys that are still playing. Uh, they just yeah, decided not to do it anymore. Justin, paintball ruined my life's socks and sandals. <laughs> I actually honestly thought about doing socks. That actually might be kind of cool. But I think the quantity of socks that I would have to get made might not be worth it. <laughs> Graphics, 30 a with a super chat. Thank you, sir. For my new M2, should I use a high pressure or low pressure tank? And what pressure would you suggest I use on a Pro V2 brick? And by the way, love your channel. Thank you. Uh, you, I don't know, you, I don't want to say you should use low pressure or should use low pressure because that makes it sound like you have to. Uh, you don't have to. You will probably benefit from using low pressure we seem to find that regulators on guns are a little bit more, I don't wanna say more reliable, but maybe more accurate when they receive low pressure. Cause I don't even know what the operating pressure of the M2 is, like 150-ish. So it's a lot easier for that tank rig to go from low pressure, say like 500 PSI to like 200, than it would be to take 800 from the rig and bump it down to 150. So it's a lot, simpler for the regulator to work. Uh, and I would say I ideal pressure coming out of any of these low pressure tanks, if you can get it between 450 and probably 500 is probably like ideal low pressure. We'll typically say that you want at least double the pressure coming out of a tank as the operating pressure of the gun. So say like the M2 is 150. I think it's like 165 though. So you want it to be about 400, but I find that I think 400 is a bit low because we want some room for air, right? So 450-ish, 450, 500. That's probably best. So yeah, low pressure is good. 450, 500. It doesn't have to be like a perfect exact number. Plus there's really no way to tell because you'd need to hook gauges up to your bottle to really know. 
Ron Evans. Again, thank you, sir. This time with an actual comment. Lose accuracy with Freak XL over stock Ether Barrel? No. I don't think so. I think that if we have, like, say you have both of those barrels, like the 689 Freak XL and the 689 stock Ether Barrel, they're probably going to shoot identical. There's really not going to be probably like an accuracy difference. But the advantage with the XL comes because you can use all those inserts to size it correctly for your paintballs. So I don't think that either barrel is necessarily like more accurate or less accurate. You're just able to make paint fit better with the XL. Yeah. I really like the stock Ethan barrels though. I think they're great. So yeah. Yeah. XLs. Outdoors for life. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> Will do. Uh, Outdoors for Life, that just reminded me. I want to do a through hike next year in August of the Tahoe Rim Trail. It's going to be, wow, let's just, let's just. No, we're not gonna do that. Yeah, it's gonna be a 11, 10 to 11 day hike. Uh, it's approximately 160 miles. Yeah. Next year. I was gonna do it like five years ago, but sprained my ankle playing freaking paintball like two weeks before it and I could barely walk. And I was like, meh, I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen. One day, one day. The lucky 15 is remarkable for a reason. <laughs> I liked those barrels. The lucky 15 barrels, I liked them because they were 15 inches. I thought that was kind of cool. I kind of like that length. It's kind of like I like the Planet Eclipse barrels uh, because they're a bit longer than, yeah, 14, are they 14 and a half or something weird? They're like a weird, they're like a weird length. Hike to Wisconsin, the Winter City 10-man tournament. <laughs> winter, winter City? The Winter, Wisconsin Winter 10-man tournament. I don't know where city came from. Uh, Wisconsin's kind of far. It's a little bit of a distance. Oh, I'm leaning over. I bought this today. Today or yesterday? Yesterday. Who knows what that is? Uh, a lot of you probably know what that is. Ooh. Ooh. We're going to wait for someone to tell me what this is. I got a pretty, pretty cheap deal. I mean, cheap, but doesn't work. So <laughs> it was uh, inexpensive. Anyone going to guess what it is? I know I'm super delayed. So I'm like sitting here like waiting for a chat to come up. A nerve, Curtis. Nerve. Yeah, 50 bucks. <laughs> it doesn't turn on though. Uh, but putting a tank on it, I'm like, man, this actually feels pretty good. I said, I might use this. I might actually use this thing. I'm going to delete the gauge. We're going to get rid of the gauge because the gauge is dumb. You don't need a gauge. So we're going to get rid of the gauge. Maybe, I mean, I got to see if I can make it work first though. How do you remove this stuff? It's been like so long since I've taken apart one of these guns. The smart parts and nerve. So the nerve, the whole idea behind the nerve um, was that it was going to replace the impulse, the smart parts impulse. Um, I guess it did, but yeah, they weren't the greatest thing. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, 50 bucks, you know, if I can make it work, I got to get a board for it, I think. If I can find a board, yeah, that might be kind of a problem. It's kind of cool. It looked all like, when it came out, it looked all futuristic and like super unique. So it's kind of cool. We're going to see. It's definitely not a Bob Long CS1. That I can assure you. Definitely not a Bob Long CS1. Mm -hmm. But the Nerve, yeah. The Nerve uh, was an interesting paintball gun. Yeah. 
You know what I'm kind of concerned about, though? We have this whole World Cup thing coming up. So, like, we're going to go to World Cup and uh, do a bunch of video stuff. So, like, you know, video stuff. And I was kind of hoping that we would see a lot of new paintball stuff and be able to, like, make videos and get, like, some, like, exclusive hands-on videos and stuff. Uh, and this, I mean, like, you know, this thing's already come out. That thing, the Dye DSR, this thing right here. Uh, and then, I mean, we've already got, like, you know, the Shocker XLS is already coming out. And, like, I don't know. This thing right here, the XLS. Damn, it's light after holding that thing. <laughs> I'm like, man, this thing's light. You know, it's definitely nicer than the, the Nerve. That's for sure. Um, yeah, all this stuff is coming out. And I kind of hope that stuff actually comes out at World Cup to be able to make videos on. If not, that's okay, because we still have all these paintball players there to talk to, so it won't be that bad. Ron Evan. Thank you, sir. What percentage of paint you test to get accurate bore? Um, uh, normally, I just grab like 10 paintballs somewhere in there. Yeah, just to get like a variety. You know, you don't want to use just one because then that's not a very good sample size. You don't have to go through the whole bag. Just like, I don't know, 10-ish. Yeah, I think that's good enough. I mean, you and ideally, you'd use the whole bag. <laughs> but, and then you could separate each, each ball out into different sizes and then, you know, real, get real crazy. That's what I do. That's what I did when I did the Freak XL accuracy, not accuracy, efficiency or velocity test, I separated all the paint out into different sizes. It was crazy. So just like a couple, a few, handful, you know, somewhere in there. Pogs. I don't know, who said Pogs? Who remembers Pogs? Jesus. Pogs? <laughs> You're gonna have to be old to remember Pogs. Uh, Seraphin, Seraphin, I, I am terrible at your name. Uh, how did, how is PB Nation getting the DSR so quick? Uh, I think that like they feel, like Die feels like it's good for them to get, it's good for, to give John Dresser, PB Nation, uh, get him a gun early so he can like talk about it and show it off and stuff. Um, I also feel that that's good and bad, right? Like. I get it from their standpoint because they're giving, you know, he does a shooting video and talks about it and gives them publicity. Um, I do that too, <laughs> though, right? But I would like Die to send me a gun early. But I also want to remain unbiased. So... By me just buying stuff and having die not anything to do with it, I feel like I can kind of say what I want more, right? Like I can be like, this thing's awful, don't ever buy it, or this thing's excellent, buy it. Where I feel like if die gave me something, I would still say it was awful, or to not buy it or buy it or whatever. I would still give my real opinion, but then they would also not want me to, they would also not want to send me guns anymore if all I did was say bad things about it. So I think that as this channel grows and manufacturers see these videos, they will maybe think about sending me stuff early, but at the same time be apprehensive about sending me stuff because they don't know what I'm gonna say. And that's fine, like, you know, I always wanna be able to say what I really think about stuff. I always will, so. Yeah. Even if there's an ad on this, this channel, like that blackfridaypaintball.com one, um, I have nothing bad to say about them. If I did, two things would happen, I'd tell you. But if I did, I really, there wouldn't be an ad either though, so yeah. Like I'm never gonna take an ad from a Dangerous Power, because I don't like Dangerous Powers. I think their stuff's kind of wonky. Enough with that. <laughs> That's probably not exciting to people. Tim 
Brad's reviews are 100% honest. That's why we're here. I hope so. I hope so. Um, that's the whole point, right? I feel that like, I say this often, but like, you know, like ANS, they put a video out about the XLS and like, I don't know, there'll be other people that come out with like shocker XLS reviews, but I feel that like they're either gonna be stores that are people trying to sell you something. So they're not gonna say it's bad. They don't wanna be like, this is awful. Check out the link below to buy it. That's not gonna happen. Or they're people that will give you an honest opinion, but I feel don't have enough experience to give a valid opinion about, I don't know, why stuff is good or why stuff is bad or whatever, you know. I've been talking about paintball nearly every day for the past like 15 years. So I feel like that's a good background to give real advice and say real things about this product and what you should do with it or whatever. Dave, yeah, but does Black Friday ship to Canada? I have no idea actually, that's a good question. I'm not sure. They might be watching the stream. I haven't seen a Black Friday paintball.com comment anywhere, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe if they're in here, they can answer that. Do you guys ship to Canada? I don't really know. I don't live in Canada, so that doesn't affect me, so I didn't really, I've never really thought about it. I know it's difficult, because it gets weird with customs and like all kinds of weirdness. So that's why I was saying it's like, weird to like, I don't know, during the raffle thing, like ship off a gun to Canada, so. Yeah, Ryan, we want to see more bids on the build. See my skills? You don't want to see my skills. I've never claimed to be good at paintball. <laughs> I've also said that. Like, I feel totally confident if someone has like a equipment question or like an industry question or like, Whatever, I can answer all that stuff. Well, not all of it, but I, you know, I can give somewhat of a good answer. But like tactics and skills about actually playing is where I get kind of like, meh, I think there's better people out there that it can answer those questions. Um, but yes, I want to do more content and make more videos at the actual fields. Like I know I have, let's read some stuff that would require me to go to a paintball field for videos that I would like to make at some point. Like, I want to do a video that's, because one of the things that I always like harp on to people is that if you want to get better, don't play paintball, do drills, right? Just do shooting drills. So I want to do a video about what's better, doing drills or playing, and the advantages to both of those. That would require me being at the field. Uh, I want to do like a paintball trick shots video, which would be kind of cool, like throwing paint in the air and shooting out of the air and stuff like that. Um, want to do like new player tips videos, like what to do at the paintball field if you're brand new and yeah. Drill videos, like what are the best drills to do. Uh, and all that requires me to be at the paintball field. Um, but it's hard because in reality, I have one day off when I can go to the paintball field. Um, Sunday, right? But then I'm making other videos for the coming week, so... It's just hard, you know? It's all about time. It's just difficult for me to get to the field. And then, like, I want to use the airball field for some of these videos, but the airball field's in use all the time. Yeah. I really need to try to get to the field on like a Monday and ask if I can like set the bunkers up by myself and like take one friend out there and we can figure it out and help each other, so. Brayden, you should play with sub subscribers. Where do you live? I mean, when I play paintball, sure. I, got, I mean, yeah. But people live all over the place. I can't drive to like Minnesota just to play paintball for a day. That's craziness. I don't have, a, there's not enough subscribers either to have like a meetup. <laughs> I 
I can't be like, meet me in Flagstaff, Arizona. Like, no one would show up. <laughs> Flagstaff might be a bad example, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Like, get a big event to play it with a bunch of subscribers. Dude, if it gets to that point where, like, I think it can support that, sure. I don't know if we're at that point, though. See, Washington State. That's far away. It's far away, it's far away. Jake, so do you think we will ever be able to play paintball underwater? <laughs> That's definitely a Jake question. Um, nope. Nope. Nope, nope. The problem is, is water's dense. So like, you know, you shoot that paintball and it's just like, Phew. okay, uh, air's not as dense as water, so. Minneapolis, Flagstaff. You're in Flagstaff, man, cuz bad. Flagstaff's rad. Flagstaff's freaking cool. That means you live close to the Grand Canyon. That means you should go to the Grand Canyon tomorrow. I would, all the time, man. It'd be my jam. Indiana, see everyone's so far apart. Everyone's so, so far apart. I liked Michael Dingo, Dingo Michael, I pronounced your name wrong today, told you I was. Um, underwater ball, I could see a rich chic in Dubai having an aquarium above a stadium. What, I don't understand that though. Go to Invasion of Normandy, Ben, I, you know, I, I might. We're gonna see how this coming year works out. Um, and, it's possible that I can hopefully try to go to some more events. Scuba spear paint, I like that. That could work. Spear guns with paint attached to them. You're like, oh, they don't really, they don't really kick that much. They're not that loud though. But it'd be cool. South Florida. Hopefully you're weathered, Irene. Okay, that's rough. That's rough. Scuba divers with paintball tipped paint tipped spears. That seems crazy. That seems like just a, a recipe for disaster to me. I don't know about this. That seems like a bad idea. Paintball Plex in Indiana. That place looks pretty good. It definitely does. I watched the uh, Go Sports did um, their like live stream practice thing they did there. That looked really good. Paintball Plex is pretty cool. It looks pretty good. Chad's in Georgia. Georgia the country or state? Not Irene. Irma, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Definitely not Irene. Hurricane Irene. What, wasn't there already a Hurricane Irene? Hurricane Irene. Was that a hurricane somewhat recently? 2011 Hurricane Irene. <laughs> well, hopefully if you were in the Northeast, you weathered Irene okay. Irma, yeah, Irma, definitely Irma, not Irene. Good thing Jose is not coming in for the, for the, uh, I was gonna say coming in for the kill, but <laughs> that's not right. Hopefully Jose stays out in the Atlantic, right? Mm -hmm. Irene was on Long Island. Yeah, Irene definitely was in the northeast of Long Island. Okay. Yeah, 2011, definitely Irene. Marbleizer or Redemption paintballs. Um, I think that I would I don't know. I have the luxury of looking at all the paint before I make my decision. So I would, me personally, look at it first. But if I had to choose without looking at it or, you know, whatever, I would go with Redemption. I think Redemption is more consistent. Like, you get the same product the majority of the time. 
Yeah, that's really what I'd do with it. And I don't know if there is a difference. Like, I think if both of those shoot well, they're going to be very similar. So, redemption. Yep. Craig loves his CS1. Mm -hmm. Irene in 2011, Sandy in 2004. Man, yeah, Sandy, Sandy wrecked some stuff up, too. Just wait, guys. These hurricanes are just going to get worse and worse and worse. If you believe in climate change, <laughs> you better believe in climate change. Most people, people that believe climate change is like not real or like a hoax, I feel bad for you. <laughs> That's how it is. Valen Val Valken paint across the board for certain. Um, Valken, yeah, all the Valken paint is good. Salt, 160R DSR, no one knows yet. I have a feeling that I would probably still say 160R, but the DSR looks really cool. Like, I really like it. Um, but, yeah, no one really knows. I mean, no one's really shot it or played with it or done anything. So it's hard to say definitively, you know, which one's better. But I still have a feeling um, that I would go with the 160R. I just, at this point, trust uh, Planet Eclipse so much more than any other company. You know, like, I know their guns work, so, yeah. The Earth is flat, for sure. The Earth, <laughs> if for certain. All those pictures from space that NASA has taken and, like, you know, the European Space Agency and, like, all these, com not companies, all these people, all these international space organizations, they're all fake. It's all photoshopped and, like, not real. It's true. It's very true. Just like when you're in, a, in, you're in an airplane and you can, like, you're really high and you can see, like, the bend, the curvature of the Earth. It's an illusion. It's because your eyes are round. And when f stuff's flat and you're looking at something really far away, it looks curved. It's true. E-flex or ascend. Uh, I'm still going E-Flex. Yeah, I, I, the E-Flex just breathes better. Ventilation on the E-Flex is just a little bit better. Craig, CS1 hater. Me? No, I like CS1. I mean, I think that, to me, it's a little big, but um, I like the CS1. I mean, I think out of all the high-end guns at this point, I'd still choose the CS1. I mean, I kind of hope that we see a CS2 or whatever at World Cup. I mean, I talk about that all the time, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mitchell, what? The, the chemtrails make it hard to see the truth about steel beams. I don't know what the steel beams means. Okay. I don't know. No one, no one likes my like explanation of why the Earth looks curved from high up altitudes. <laughs> anyway, I feel like this is dragging on. Any suggestions on hoppers for the Proto for the Rise Max? Uh, it depends on how much money you want to spend. There's three price ranges: Halo Two, sixty-five, uh, GI Sports level one fifty-five, uh, best one ever, Spire Three two fifty. So one of those three. Uh, it just matters how much money you want to spend, yeah. Hurricane Jose is on track to hit the East Coast? I don't think so. Isn't Hurricane, isn't Jose like stalled in the Atlantic? Plus it was only Cat 1, and then if it goes further north, it should be downgraded to a tropical storm, I imagine. <laughs> we can talk about weather. I love weather, weather's the greatest. Fun fact, at one point I wanted to be a meteorologist. Not the guy who came on and talked about the TV though. Like, I wanted to be a like climate scientist. Yeah. E-Tech 4 Empire or Axe Mini. <sighs> what is an Axe Mini? Explain to me that first.
Mitchell, anyone with a GoPro and a weather balloon can prove the Earth is not flat. No, it's because the lens, like look at the GoPro, the lens, the lens on the GoPro is curved, right? Lenses are not flat. All the elements inside that lens are curved. So when it gets really high, things at distance look curved. It's true. Look it up, it's science. PB obsession. Does a freak XL? Okay, does the, some of these, when you guys leave $2 super chat comments, sometimes I know you guys try to like finagle the questions in there because it won't let you put a lot of characters. So we gotta like decipher them sometimes. Does, does Freak XL louder due to less porting Kabili? Capabili? Capabili. Um, <laughs> does Freak XL louder due to less porting? I don't think so. No. Uh, Ryan, unboxing over. Go back and watch the beginning. Uh, I don't think the Freak XL is necessarily louder because of the p less porting. They don't really have less porting. They may have a little less porting. Definitely the straight tip though, the one with the straight porting is for sure the quietest one. Yeah. Cap your billies. <laughs> Cap a billy. Um, yeah, I don't think it's, it's not gonna be, like I think if we had a Freak XL and a regular Freak, they'd probably be the same loudness level. I don't think there'd be much of a difference. Yeah. Science guys, I'm telling you, it's all because of lenses. Your cornea and retina, it's all shape, it's all a lens, so it's all curved. If it wasn't, if you had a flat, you wouldn't be able to see much because your eyes, you'd be just looking straight out at stuff. So you'd see like this much things. You wouldn't have like this depth perception or field of vision. It's true. More science. That's actually true. Anyway. <laughs> Bye Chuck. Chuck has buckets of stuff to do. So do I though. Buckets, get buckets. Buckets, buckets. When's the NBA start? Uh, we still got like a month and a half till we can watch NBA basketball. Oh, Michael, Freak X, Freak. No, your, Michael's question, your, your, your statement is confused. You said Freak XLS should be quieter because of the lower operating pressure. The Freak XL barrel though shouldn't be any different. The Shocker XLS should be quieter though because of the lower operating pressure. But I don't know if we're gonna notice that. Like, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna notice that big of a difference quietness wise. I mean, I still think that like the freaking mini GS and like the axes are like, can be at least some of the quietest guns ever. They're like really, really quiet. White, look at the mount, look at the moon, round. <laughs> no one said the moon wasn't round. The moon can be round. Then why are stars round? Are stars round? Stars are round because of gravity. The earth was made by aliens, so that's why it's round. Anyway, guys, okay, I'm leaving. Um, this is the last live stream of the wor week. Um, yep, that's about all. If you guys want, there will be next week, where'd that thing go? There's gonna be a Shocker XLS review Tuesday, Tuesday. Make sure to watch that. Shocker XLS shooting video 
and final thoughts video. Um, does it does it shoot different? How different does it feel? I don't know. We're gonna find out. That's why you have to come back and watch the Shocker XLS review, uh, or come back.